With a linked file allocation, typically each file consists of a bunch of blocks with a thing called pointers. And these pointers are typically something like this. Each data block would contain bits of data, like obviously there's bytes here and there, and have a, a part of the space of the block is actually reserved to have the number of the next block. So this number two actually points to block number two. And this little bit of space in block two, called a pointer, points to block three, and so on. So in our example, when we create file one, we say that it starts at one, it points to here. Now the information about the next block is stored within the file itself. So number one goes to two, which goes to three, which goes to four, which goes to five, which goes to six. And there's a special indicator at the end. It's a special block which represents the end of file mark. Typically it'd be a block like this. If we take a look down here, instead of having, for example, a three, it would be something like maybe zero. That could be, this is the end of file. You'll find a lot of this in, for example, Windows, um, Windows documents, uh, DOS-based documents, technically speaking, where they use a special thing called Control-Z to say it's the end of the file. So again, we have the second file. Our directory has file 2. Starts at block 7. Go to block 7. And block 7 points to block 8, 9, 10, and so on. Okay, simple example. Again, we're adding our third block, our third file. Starts at number 23, point it to here. And again, 23, 24, 25, dot, 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 59, 60. Now, if we want to delete a file, all we have to do, again, like contiguous, we just remove the point to the start of file. So we simply say, this file doesn't exist by deleting the file entry and removing it. That's all we have to do. Interestingly enough, that means the data that's in this blocks is still there. This is how you can do an undelete or unerase. You can just read it, locate the files, and start bringing it out. Now, I'm going to add a fourth file. That's easy enough. Do the same thing. Seven blocks starts at seven. We can plunk it here. Again, continue on till we get to the end. Now, if we want to edit or more correctly append blocks to our existing files, it's a rather simple exercise. All we have to do is basically change the pointer, in this case, the end of file at block six, to point to the new additional block, which in this case is 61. And we add the rest of the document as usual. So, we have, instead of file 5, for example, we say it starts at 14, but interestingly enough, it doesn't have to go linearly. We can do it like this. Okay, 14 to 15, 16, which goes to 97, which then goes to 22, back to 21, and suddenly back to 20, back to 10, uh, 19, 18, 17, and 17 could be the end of the file. It does not have to be in order. So it can be in any random order that you like. It does not have to be sequential. With link file allocation, files can be eventually randomly scattered throughout the disk. There are many algorithms operating systems used to optimize this, but ultimately it depends on what's available on the disk. For example, after adding, editing, deleting, File 5 can be scattered throughout the disk, as you can see in this example. The blocks start at 14, and to read each block, you'll have to read 14, 15, 16, 17, then down to 97, 98, 61, 51, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 52, then 62. The obvious disadvantage of this is that to locate the fifth block, which would be number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, still needs five reads, but now the disk, instead of being 
quickly grabbing it off this section of the disc, it's got to leap to the, the end of the disc to actually read the fifth block. That takes a, a bit of time, so it's not as efficient as you would hope. The obvious issues with linked file allocation is that in order to read the end of the file, you have to read all this information before you get to the end of the file. So, if file 5, for example, is 16 blocks long, we have to read 16 blocks to get to the end. On average, you'll probably read something like the middle. That's about 16 on 2, about 8 blocks. Or if you want to read the first block, you just only have one read. It's not necessarily a, necessarily a very efficient system.